This is a shot of Arnold's right peck from Terminator 2. It has the shape of a human pectoralis muscle, but he's reduced the firmness so it behaves more like fat, soft and compressible. This is Jeff Goldblum in The Fly, and he's demonstrating the same thing with this muscle in his back. Now it's Sandal and Hell comes to Frogtown. She's reduced the firmness of the tissue in her arms, so they flop around like they're made of gelatin. She's going to move her breasts around as if they were muscles, but this motion is not produced by real muscular action. She's using her polymorphic ability to move the cells around, and they can do this with any part of their bodies. These are shots of her from other videos where she's showing her versions. She's reverting her lateral neck creases in the left and right frames, and one of her front neck cords in the middle frame. She's doing this to show that she's a drag, which explains what's going on in the video. They can generate angular shapes and flat surfaces from their bodies, which is what you're seeing here. The bodybuilder's right calf is angular. Mastro Antonio's head is angular and flat along the sides. And Kim Bubs' fingers are angular and flat. They could form their entire bodies into angular shapes and flat surfaces so they could make themselves look like box robots if they wanted to. The official explanation is injections, but you know better now. Shape-shifting, not implants. A can-shaped buttock and an egg-shaped buttock. As I said, any part of their bodies. This is Hugh Bailey, the human pretzel. As it turns out, not human at all but it does show the ridiculous shapes they can mold their bodies into. Look at his right arm. It has angularities, flat surfaces, and it spirals. There's no way you'd be able to use that arm based on muscle mechanics. But he has no problem, because his body doesn't rely on muscle mechanics. It's motivated entirely by his polymorphic ability which allows him to move the cells around in any direction, free of the constraints of muscles and bones. This is him in the movie The Mutations, also known as the Freak Maker. He morphs his hands, arms, and legs throughout these clips, and I've slowed those parts down so it's easier to see the changes.
You can see here that his right lower leg has the native ankle joint, except that it's bent in the reverse direction. That makes it look like it's his knee, but his knee is actually up at the pants edge. I showed these two earlier, and they have the same kind of bent lower leg, so I'm quite certain that those are their native ankle joints in reverse. As you'll see later, they can bend their knees in reverse, so it's not surprising that they can do the same with their ankle joints. Again, it's possible that they're bending the bones, but judging by the way Hugh moves, it looks like a joint to me. Did you catch the shape shifting in that clip? In the left frame, which comes earlier, you can see that his ring and pinky fingers have moved closer together and become much thinner than normal as they've started to meld together. In the right frame, they've completely melded together to form a single finger, so he has only four fingers on his left hand now. This proves that Hugh is a drac and that the rest of his body is the result of shape-shifting, not some birth defect. He could morph his body into far more exaggerated shapes than this, but as I said, there's a limit to what they're willing or permitted to show. In Hugh's case, I think he'd be willing to show just about anything, but if he went any further, they would have killed him before he got the chance to show it. Again, this is Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio in The Abyss. She's showing a fairly deep reversion in the left frame, the reptilian eye, mouth, and center forehead ridge, as you saw before. The right frame occurs two seconds later in the shot, where her face is already returning to its human imitation form. The center ridge is gone for the most part, and her human nose is beginning to take shape. In the second shot here, she's morphed her features into crude, incomplete forms. Her nose is shaped like a block, her mouth is little more than a slit, and her eyes are angular and flat. I doubt that you could see with her eyes in that state, but again, I suppose anything is possible with their supernatural biology. In this last shot of the sequence, she's morphing her face in its human imitation form. You can see that her left nostril is split open in the right frame. A plate-like edge is formed over her left cheek in the left frame. In the right frame, a lump is formed on her right cheek and her right eye is turned into a black hole. These two have reduced the complexity of their faces and generated cartoonish features. The one on the left has ungenerated his eyebrows and eyelashes, reduced the size of his eye rides, and removed most of the skin texture and the normal coloration from his upper lip. You can also see that he's reverting the depressed area at the base of his neck, which confirms that he's a drac and that all of this is shape-shifting. The one on the right has removed all of the texture from the skin, increased the size of the eyes, and reduced the nose and mouth. They could all reduce the complexity of their bodies to make themselves look like plastic dolls or 3D computer models. That's what this one's done. 
He's reduced the complexity of his body, the shape and texture, so that he looks like a doll or 3D computer model. The official explanation is that he spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on surgery to make himself look like a freak. You're an idiot if you believe that. Angelina and the male imitation on the left have removed most of the texture from their skin. They've also increased the reflectivity to make it shine like plastic. They could increase the reflectivity even further to make it as shiny as metal, and you'll see an example of that later. This one has generated pieces of skin peeling off but it's not actually dead. I've seen this in person on a male imitation whose skin looked normal and then a few hours later was peeling and then back to normal again a short time after. Also notice that the ears partially melted into the head. That's to let you know that it's all shape-shifting. This almost looks like a 3D computer model. And someone added a blurred transition on the left side to make it look that way. But it is real. It's removed all of the texture from its skin and generated plastic reflectivity. It's obviously decompressed its legs and buttocks. And it's reduced the shape complexity of its entire body. It also appears to be reverting the chest bulge. You've already seen a number of examples that demonstrate that all of this is possible. She's reduced the tautness of the skin and generated folds and creases where there shouldn't be any. It has nothing to do with sunburn. It's all shape-shifting, including the skin color change and the child imitation is sticking out his tongue to let you know that they're Drax. These individuals have reduced the tautness of their skin while increasing the thickness, so it forms into heavy folds. The ones showing their torsos have also reduced the texture of the skin, which makes it look like they're wearing rubber suits but it is their skin. The official explanation is that this is caused by a rare type of fungal infection. No, that's stupid. This would never happen to human skin. It's obviously shape-shifting, and I've seen this in person so I know it's real. They can make themselves look like walking trees. I spoke to a drac recently, a female imitation, who confirmed that they can all generate this bark skin. They all have this code in their cells. She said that they all have the ability to morph into plant imitation forms, and I've seen it myself. Of course, they're not actually turning into plants, its shape, texture, color, and hardness generated to resemble bark, but it's not really plant matter. The cells in there are always reptilian. The official explanation is tumors. Nearly every human that looks at this accepts that explanation. They're failing IQ tests every moment of their lives. Drax can generate skin that looks like bark, so generating bubbles is no problem. How do you breathe and eat with a solid mass of tissue covering your nose and mouth? If you're human, you don't. 
you asphyxiate and die. But if you're a drac, you can generate a channel through the tissue which allows you to breathe. When you need to eat, you morph your face back to its normal human imitation form. And when you're done, you morph it back to its altered state, which remains perfectly accurate in the cellular code. They can decompress or expand specific areas of their bodies. That's what you're seeing here. The one on the left decompressed or expanded the cells on his lips and in those bumps on his face. And the one on the right decompressed or expanded the cells on the left side of his face and the top of his head. The official explanation for this one is tumors. Symmetrical tumors. Right. That must have also caused his mouth to change into a non-human form and his skin to turn reddish. He's trying to generate the facial appearance of a boar with a body that looks like it's made out of molten rocks. They can generate any shape, texture, and color from their skin. They can change its thickness, hardness, elasticity, tautness, and reflectivity. They can make it look and feel like any kind of animal hide, tree bark, stone, plastic, metal, and of course human skin, complete with fingerprints. They tell you that you're looking at diseases and tumors, but to any marginally intelligent person, it should be obvious that there's something supernatural going on here. Their hairs are also shapes generated from the skin, same as the other shapes, just formed into fibers instead of bubbles or bark. This is Britney Spears on generating the fibers on the back of her head, where the cells have liquefied and melted together into a solid plasticized mass. Those fibers are basically reverting to their natural state as skin cells. She could regenerate them in an instant, and those liquefied cells would reform into hairs, the same length and color as before. These three have melded the fibers together towards the bottom, forming a solid mass. And it's too long to be real hair. This stress would cause it to break off before it reached that length. Just think of it as a long piece of skin hanging off the head. That's what you're looking at. These three have generated extremely large volumes of hair, and they've accomplished this by decompressing each fiber. So the total number of fibers hasn't changed, not much anyway. It's that each individual fiber has become much larger. You can see that most clearly with the one on the left. Just like the other skin morphing we've seen, they can form these fibers into any shape, even into formations that defy gravity. They could have their hair sticking straight out to the side, five feet or more. They're using their polymorphic ability to maintain that position, but it almost certainly uses up energy when they do that. Just as we saw in Brittany, the guy on the left has largely plasticized his hair, where the fibers have melded together into a solid mass.
This is also shape-shifting. Just like the fibers on their heads, these are generated from skin cells. They can curl and uncurl these fibers in an instant just by thinking it. The guy on the right could make his beard move like tentacles and even grab objects, but that's not something they'd show in public. They can generate these fibers anywhere on their bodies, even in places where humans don't have hair follicles, like the palms of the hands. This allows them to imitate creatures with fur. And I know that this is true because I've personally seen them in werewolf forms. The one at the top left has generated straight, head-type hair on her face. And the one below has generated very long, straight fibers from her upper eyelids. Once again, she's sticking her tongue out to let you know that she's a drac. As I showed in my last video, the V sign means that they're Drax, though I'm not sure what it represents exactly about them. Whatever it is, it doesn't mean peace or victory. In some cultures where this sign is popular in the mainstream media, like Japan, you may get a few humans doing it, but the Drax are definitely the origin. They're all demonstrating increased skin elasticity. You can't do this with human skin. The guy in the middle right frame is also showing increased elasticity with the tissue inside his cheeks. And the guy in the bottom right frame has ungenerated his left eyelids, so his eyeball is exposed, just sitting in a hole. This guy has pulled the skin from his neck all the way up to his hairline. I had a quote-unquote friend in middle school who one time pulled the skin out from his neck at least six inches on each side. I didn't know what it was at the time, but I do remember it. Now that I recognize it, I remember him doing a lot of shape-shifting. This one has generated thick flaps of skin on his forehead and face, and he's increased the elasticity of the tissue to make it sag. His nose and mouth are deformed as well. This one has increased the tissue elasticity in the left side of his face, causing it to sag below his chin while generating bumps on the right side of his face. In the right frame you can see that his ear is dropped down to his neck and it looks like melted plastic, which it basically is. In the middle frame he's demonstrating the rubbery nature of the tissue. This one has sagged the left side of his face down to his chest. He's also generated small bumps in the skin. The official explanation for this is elephantiasis, another fake disease. The real explanation is shape-shifting. This one has sagged the right side of his face even further down, generating a very large mass of tissue. In the left frame you can see how depressed he is to have this horrible deformity, and how he doesn't want to have his picture taken. To them it doesn't matter what they look like in their human imitation forms. Fat, ugly, deformed, they know it's just a costume they wear to fool humans. However, when they start deforming their costumes too much, they risk breaking the masquerade, which may get them killed. 
but in terms of their personal estimation of human beauty, they don't care at all. This one has sagged and decompressed all of the soft tissue in his face. It's to the point of being comical. Even his mouth has sagged to a much lower position, which likely means that the skull has elongated as well. He's also missing his ears. The official explanation is that a tumor caused this. You have to be an abject moron to believe that, and apparently most humans are. That's some tumor that causes your head to turn into Jabba the Hutt. Sagging eyes, noses, and mouths. It's a living plastic doll that had one side of its face melted, which deformed and sagged, and then solidified in its new form. That's what you're looking at. Living alien plastic that can liquefy, change shape, and solidify again. Skin, muscle, and bone. Every cell in their bodies. These two are primarily expanding and sagging the tissue around their eyes. It looks like they've ungenerated those eyes, otherwise there'd be giant eyeballs in there. Those are the eyelids in the right frame, so you can see how big the eyeball would be if it were present. This one is generating both bumps and sag. Also notice that she's reduced the length of the fingers on her right hand, so she's leaving no doubt that it's all shape-shifting. Again, the official explanation is tumors, which is laughable. Her skin is decidedly greenish in these photos. How many humans saw this and actually questioned what they were looking at? I admire the Drax that are willing to do this, but they must also wonder if it's worth helping a race that can't see the truth when it's right in front of them. She sagged the left side of her face and also notice that her hair is plasticized on that side. The fibers have melded together and formed into a solid mass that looks like it's made of plastic. That's the same thing I showed earlier with the guy on the left. In other versions of this photo, that side of her hair has been completely blacked out, so you don't see that. This is the only one I've found that hasn't been altered. He's generated thick overlapping folds on his face, and one that covers the top of his head. You've seen how many different appearances they can create, and these are only based on their human imitation forms. They could also change the basic forms of their bodies to create an almost infinite number of appearances. This one has sagged her entire face, generating a long piece on the right side. She's also ungenerated her eyes, or at least compressed them to a much smaller size. They may still be in the sockets, just hidden behind the skin. How she got the skin over the sockets is by melting the eyelids together, and they can all do this spontaneously. This one has completely ungenerated her human imitation face, including the eyes, and she sagged a large mass of tissue down to her chest. She doesn't have an identifiable nose or mouth, and there's no indication of eye sockets either. 
It's not recognizable as a human face at all. Again, when she has to eat, she morphs her face, or at least her mouth, back to its normal human imitation form. And when she's done, she shifts back to this state. Notice in the left frame that her mother is generating small bumps all over her face. That's also shape-shifting, and it's meant to show you that they're both Drax, and that her daughter is shape-shifting as well. These two have sagged the tissue in their faces down to their chests, liquefied the skin cells, and melded them together. They can meld any part of their bodies together like this. Eyelids, lips, teeth, fingers, toes, and even legs. The official explanations for these are fire and acid burns. But fire and acid don't cause your skin to sag and meld into other parts of your body. The cells would just die and fall off, or be eaten away. And your body isn't going to create scar tissue like this. You can also see that they're reverting some of the cords and tendons in their necks. Here are two more shape-shifting under the pretense of being burn victims. The one on the left has reduced the entire face to a crude state and also increased the reflectivity of the skin so it looks like plastic. In addition to sagging and melding the skin from the face, the one on the right has also melded the left arm to the torso. You can also see that the bottom row of teeth have turned out to the front, and that they've morphed into sharp points. I'll show more examples of teeth morphing later. Here are two examples of sagging tissue on the body. The one on the left is called a disease, neurofibromatosis, and the one on the right is called fat. But they're actually the same thing, just on different parts of the body. It's tissue decompression or expansion combined with increased elasticity. That's how they create this sagging flesh. This is an example of cellular liquefaction and increased elasticity applied to all of the soft tissue in a body. It looks like it's melting, and in effect, it is. This individual has switched the cells to a semi-fluid state, increased the elasticity, and allowed gravity to take effect. The result is what appears to be a human body melting into a puddle of tissue. He or she could take it further by liquefying the bones, which would cause the entire body to flatten out. But in that case, it wouldn't look like a real body anymore, so that would defeat the purpose of the demonstration. This photo shows up in memes, but when you know what it really is, it's not funny anymore. The point of many memes is to show people images of shape-shifting, but they do it under the guise of humor. These photos were supposedly taken in 1905, showing a female imitation with liquefied bones in her arms and legs. The official disease is called osteomalacia, which means soft bones, but it sounds more impressive in Latin. Her arms and legs are in different poses between the photos, so it's clear that the bones are soft and flexible, not just deformed over time. If you were to bend her arms and legs, they'd probably feel like they were made of rubber. There are only two ways that she could have been reposed. Someone else moved her arms and legs, or she moved them herself. Most likely, she moved them herself. As we saw with Hugh Bailey, their plasticized forms are not motivated by muscle mechanics. They're using their polymorphic ability to move the cells around so they don't need rigid bones with muscles contracting to produce movement. 
Using her polymorphic ability, she'd be able to move her floppy limbs around like tentacles, bending and twisting them in any direction. It's unlikely that she could stand up in this state, with no rigidity in her legs, but she would be able to crawl on all fours. In the left frame, you can tell that her right lower leg is much longer than quote-unquote normal, even bent as it is, and she's morphed her right upper arm into a flat, rectangular shape, which is different from the right frame, so that's clearly identified as shape-shifting. Her left hand is elongated in both photos, and it appears that she's ungenerated her vagina. So there's more going on here than just soft bones. After these photos were taken, she straightened out her arms and legs, morphed the rest of her body back to normal, switched the bone cells back to the solid state, stood up, and walked out. Needless to say, I have a great deal of respect for this individual. Here are two more demonstrating bone liquefaction. In addition to bending and twisting, their bones would also stretch when pulled. So in the semi-fluid state, their bones behave much like rubber. They can simulate injuries in this way by bending the bones to make it look like they're broken. <laughs> 